Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with another video on how you can create a modern ETL pipeline with Salesforce and Snowflake. Um, so what we're gonna be doing here is extracting some examples, you know, Salesforce customer data, very typical process. Uh, then we are going to perform some operations to truncate it, clean it up a little bit, uh, bring it into a staging S3 bucket. Um, then we're going to load it into Snowflake um, and then refresh a reporting table at the end that uh, will be used to power a uh, analytics dashboard. Um, so here's the general flow of the task. You know, first you can see we're uploading Salesforce data, truncating it, copying it over, storing it in S3 data lake, loading that into Snowflake, uh, and then you can see we're also deleting that data from S3 landing. Um, so really cool setup here today. Excited to get into it. And without further ado, let's switch over to VS Code and get coding. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so one thing to note here is that we actually aren't using any kind of integration service like Fivetran or Airbyte because they're not really necessary here. Um, we have a custom built Salesforce to S3 operator where you can do this for very easily with the Python function with the Astro SDK. A lot of different ways um, you can do integration without needing to leverage one of those external services. Obviously you can, if you're already paying for those licenses, you're comfortable with them, that would be an easy way to swap out there. Um, so when you're looking at the Salesforce to S3, that's where you would swap that out um, from for you know, so like a five train operator or an airbyte. Um, so now let's get into bringing in all of our packages, all of our requirements, everything we need to actually make this DAG run. Um, so you're going to want to bring in uh, number one, obviously your DAG, uh, a chain operator, because we're going to use that just to set the relationships between the uh, tasks at the end. Um, you're going to have a dummy operator. This one you don't have to do if you don't want to set a beginning and end task. Um, I just like to do that so I have a little bit of a buffer before the actual process tasks run. Um, but feel free to delete that if you don't want to have a dummy task. Um, then we're going to import the uh, S3 copy object operator, S3 delete objects operator, um, this Salesforce to S3 operator, um, Snowflake, S3 to Snowflake, um, as well as the trigger rule so we can define you know, what triggers um, we want to do to conduct certain actions here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in practice in a second. Um, but basically just a lot of different operators so we can interact with the three main S's, the three main services here, uh, S3, Snowflake, uh, and Salesforce. Um, so now got everything imported. We are also going to want to set some global uh, variables so that you know we can easily update. You know, if we want to change the data bucket, we want to make any alterations that are propagated throughout the data or throughout the DAG without needing to obviously go back and uh, recreate all these um, and you know manually edit them. So the first one here, we are um, taking a variable from this JSON file we have loaded. And so the reason this is a var.json is because these are actually going to be dynamically reading in um, what that bucket name is based on um, the actual time of day of the source file. So that is why you have these kind of uh, weird names because this is using Jinja templating to actually dynamically generate them at runtime. Um, so for like the data folder path, this execution date, um, it's, so it's going to create multiple files of you know the same Salesforce extract, but it'll timestamp them so they don't just constantly overwrite each other in that S3 bucket. Um, and this is a great way, just in general, um, of making sure hey, if you have to bulk load something every day and you're you're saving all those individual files, just add a date time uh, Jinja template here so that it'll just automatically create or you know dynamically create uh, files with that date and time. Which you know number one is great for debugging if you ever have to go back, uh, but also just provides an easy way to segment all of them. Uh, then we also just have our base Salesforce accounts. This is just the name of that S3 base path. Um, then we have our accounts um, coming in for our, that Salesforce file name, which again is just getting the current date time um, so that you have that you know save file with the date time at the end so they don't overwrite each other. Uh, then AWS connection ID. So these are the two connections you're going to set in the Airflow UI. So you're going to have AWS connection ID as well as a Snowflake connection ID um, and make sure you name them these two um, unless you just want to keep the same uh, variable names here. Um, and so with that, we've got all our variables set up. So now we'll actually uh, start building out our DAG. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll actually use a standard DAG definition here um, where we're just going to do DAG ID, start, you know, all the normal stuff. The only thing that we're going to include here is that we can reference some SQL files we've done for some of the creation and cleaning scripts. Um, that are create uh, within our local file path. So you can see, because it's includes SQL, I'm using an Astro image. Um, so it's going to reference this 
uh, include directory and then within SQL. Um, so then what I'll do later on is reference, hey, is it in Snow Salesforce in this specific um, template? But this just makes it easier so I don't have to write out that include SQL part every time I reference a SQL script. Um, then what we'll do is create our two dummy operators. And again, you can skip this if you don't like doing dummy operators. Um, and then after we've done that, we can get started creating our actual functional tasks. Um, so the first one we'll create, as you might have seen from when I laid it all out in the beginning, um, is our upload Salesforce data to S3 landing. So what we're doing here is we're using, again, this Salesforce S3 operator, um, referencing a Salesforce query, which is in that you know, include directory right here. Um, so you can see here we have extract accounts, select ID, uh, name, and account. Um, and so it's going to get all my IDs, all my accounts, um, and then it is going to store that in the S3 bucket, um, which is being referenced up here. So you can see the landing bucket here. Um, and then you have your Salesforce best base pass and the file name that's being dynamically generated as well. Um, now here, referencing a Salesforce connection, um, my AWS connection ID as well. So this is one thing that we didn't actually set at the top because it's only being used within this operator, but you'll want to create a connection to Salesforce within um, the UI and then reference it as the Salesforce um, connection ID. So boom, now we've got our data into our S3 bucket. Um, that's all set up. So the next step is going to be actually creating a stage for that data to go within uh, Snowflake before we can move it in there. So our next step is going to be truncating our staging table just so that we have and creating a staging table for um, our data to be loaded into. Um, so here we have truncate Snowflake stage table. The SQL statement is just um, you know, truncate table, um, and then we're passing it the table name of customers staging. And the reason we're doing this is because we obviously want our staging table to be fresh. We're reusing this for data. Um, and you could re-architect the setup and teardown task to actually delete all the data every time um, instead of having this step beginning of every pipeline. Um, but basically it's clearing out the previous load of data into that staging table and readying it for us to actually load our fresh accounts data um, into that staging table. And so after we've done that, um, then we are going to use the S3 to Snowflake operator to actually copy the landed files from S3 to the Snowflake stage table. Um, so here you're going to, again, just reference that same Salesforce S3 base path. Um, and this stage you'll create within your Snowflake environment. Um, so you'll actually need to go into Snowflake, create a staging table, and then link it to um, your AWS S3 bucket. Um, so you can see file format, it has its own S3 landing CSV, um, that's just a default. Snowflake connection ID prefix that S3 base path. Um, and that's really an important step that I'll show you behind the scene you have to do, which is linking those two accounts. You'll need to create an IAM role within uh, Amazon and then pass it into Snow, uh, Snowflake. Um, so I actually have a video on that if you want to check it out. Um, so the next one is actually um, just you know reference that table again. Um, and now that we have copied it into our staging table, we're actually going to load it from staging um, into uh, production. So here you have just a basic Snowflake operator that's referencing this SQL code um, up here where it's just selecting all of the uh, customers that were um, created between the last update date time and the current uh, date time. Um, so anyone that was referenced or added uh, after the last load, so you don't have duplicate data. Um, and then when it doesn't provide it and doesn't exist, then you're going to set that name um, to create a new customer record within that Snowflake customers table. Um, so we are starting to move everything into prod, getting it out of that staging environment. Um, and then what we'll do next is actually refresh our reporting table um, which is going to be referenced um, on our website traffic dashboard. Um, so here you have refresh reporting table, um, again, using a Snowflake operator um, that is going to build um, our registry reporting table, so, or not build, but insert, um, overwrite our previous data to show what our, customer, our most recent visits were, adding those additional um, people that were just present in the last time period um, to our overall data, um, and then joining that um, to our existing reporting table. So it updates the visualizations in our dashboard. Um, and so once we have done that, um, we are going to want to move our uh, that S3 file 
out of our staging uh, S3 bucket and actually move it into our S3 data lake. Um, so here, what we're going to do is use an S3 copy object operator since we're just moving between two S3 buckets. So this second S3 bucket is just an unstructured data lake of just all of the data, raw data. Um, so we have a you know past record, we have a reference of all of our uh, ingestions. And so here, what you'll do is um, say your reference your source bucket um, what dot output so here we're doing the, our upload salesforce data s3 landing dot output and the reason we're doing that is because the output of this um, references hey we're going outputting a file and putting it into snowflake so we're basically hijacking that output um, and using it as that source bucket um, then we are creating or using our data lake raw bucket um, that was defined uh, previously as well as jinja templating together a destination bucket key with our salesforce base path date folder path, Salesforce file name to make sure that it is unique. And um, we don't, again, run into that problem of overwriting uh, previous entries. Um, and then we'll have our AWS connection ID so we can actually perform these actions. Um, and finally, or not finally, but our last task that we're going to add here is just deleting um, the landed accounts data file um, after it's persisted to the data lake. So after we've copied that object from our kind of intermediary staging S3 bucket, it's moved to our data lake, delete it from that S3 landing bucket so it's not clogging um, it up if we're not paying for duplicate data storage, right? Uh, why would we do that? Um, so after that's done, that'll be deleted. So again, this is where you know you could have a teardown task that deletes that um, as well as you know maybe also um, deletes that staging data table. But hey, you know, it's not 2.7 is out yet, so it's not really possible yet, is it? Um, so what we'll do here now is create some uh, task dependencies using the chain function. Um, and what we'll do is actually a few different task dependencies because we want some several different chains. Um, so here, again, an additional chain function just to make sure that the proper relationships are set because we need, you know, after it goes from copy S3 to Snowflake kind of in parallel um, running that uh, staging data to copy action after. Um, so that is really all we need to do on the DAG side of things. Now let's go over to the Airflow UI and show you some of the setup and what this looks like actually in the UI. And now here we have it, um, our DAG uh, within the Airflow UI. So here um, you can see the kind of the result of those three different trains. So, you know, we have our overall train, which is actually uploading that data um, and then loading it. But we also have kind of a parallel chain of you know, storing in that S3 data lake, deleting it, um, from the S3 landing after it's been loaded into Snowflake and making sure that all happens at the right time is very important. So you don't delete stuff before it's loaded. Um, and so some of the connections you'll need to create, um, and I obviously won't <laughs> give you my real variables, but what I'll show you here is within your connection variables, you're going to want to add an AWS connection um, called S3. So we'll call this S3 AWS. And I forget it's called Amazon Web Services in here. Um, and then just bring in your uh, secret, your access key ID and secret access key. If you're using uh, programmatic um, variables, you might want to just add it as a JSON file um, because you'll note these actually aren't required because you can add all these variables within the extra um, just as JSON. Um, and then the second one you're going to create is your Snowflake connection. So we'll call this Snowflake. And with Snowflake, what you're going to want to do is make sure you have your schema. So your JITS, um, here's my variables. You won't need any extra, um, your, whatever your account name is. Um, so it looks something like uh, that. And then you don't need a warehouse. You do need a database name. So sandbox here. Um, don't need a uh, Salesforce role. Make sure you put in your region. Um, and you, know, you can test it obviously here, unless you're in Airflow 2.7 where test is actually disabled. Um, you know, save that as well. Um, and then you can start running your ETL DAG. And that is where I will leave you for today. Um, so please go out, check this out for yourself. I'd show you this whole running, but it's, you know, basically it's popping in S3 and Snowflake. Um, but I'll drop the code below. Try it out for yourself. If you run any problems, hit me up. I'm always here to help. Um, if you have any videos you'd like me to cover, any topics, anything at all, let me know. The data guy is here for you. Um, so have a good one. See you next or see you tomorrow. Bye.